Record City has been my home for since 1997. It's where I bought my first album from uh, Chibo Mato, from uh, Bjork, a Big Time Sensuality single, and uh, the Battlestar Galactic soundtrack. But yeah, it's all gone. In this edition, we follow local indie music shop Record City from its original Hillcrest location from 1997 to 2022, and now currently at its new location in Point Loma. It wasn't an easy transition, as you'll see. Keep the vinyl spinning in a brand new city at Record City. How long have you been with Record City? Almost 26 years. And how did you uh, end up getting a job here? You can imagine frequenting record shops, frequenting it so many times that when the store decided, Record City decided to open up a, another location, my name came to mind, unfortunately, so I got lucky. Right. If anybody that could have got picked, I got picked, so I was. Here we are, 20, almost 26 years later. I know. You got it, you, you got it. I mean, I'm not saying you have it easy, but you have an easy year. We're the ones that are stressing out doing all the work. So, so we'll, we'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, I tried to interview my friend Graham and he's not in the mood. Uh, someone was supposed to uh, call him about a new property. Nothing happened, so. Hopefully, catch him another day. Hey, good Mr. Graham. How you doing? Are you okay? Oh. Well, we're not exactly uh, feeling it. All right, go ahead. Thank you, sir. Come for the beetle light. This is it, folks. As you can see, this yellow room. There's no more posters. Uh, it's an end of an era, and this sucks. When you got the letter that you had to move out of that building in Hillcrest, and did you think you'd get this building? So, we knew it was coming. Getting the notice was, you know, that was kind of, that was, that was going to happen eventually. But we knew for months that it was coming. We, I, think we, I, didn't, I don't think we thought we'd actually move out probably till the new year. So, that, so that's probably where we got caught off guard by, you know, having to move out like two or three months early. But we thought we were gonna be, you know, starting the year off in a new location, but uh, things, are, things have changed, you know, with looking for places. I mean, now you don't, you don't even deal with landlords. You deal with brokers that don't call you back, don't answer the telephone. It's just, it was just one thing after another, them breaking promises. So finding uh, Point Loma was uh, a blessing in disguise. I think we can, we can safely say that. I was for, you know, lucky enough to befriend Fred Schneider from the B-52s in 2004. And I'm still maintaining that friendship. And we've, you know, we've had some some of my favorites come in, you know, Andy Mulkusky, Andy Mulkusky oh, from OMD, because he came in a couple of times, and then, but um, best day ever at Record City, we had the mid-year from Ultravox come in for a signing. So we've had some others, um, but that would be uh, my best day. I mean, Midge was uh, a lovely man. Do you miss Hillcrest? I do not miss Hillcrest. I think, of course, you know, it was, it had its moments. Of course, we were there for 25 years, so we we definitely had some good some good times. But I think that uh, I th definitely parts of Hillcrest have run its course. I mean, when you can't park anymore, that's obviously discouraging. Some of your favorite places are gone. Um, I think you know, like anything else, you have to have a reason for going into a certain area, whether it be your favorite restaurant. Your favorite, you know, favorite store or whatever. For me personally, there's nothing left for me there. I think at its peak, I remember when I was going to Hillcrest, one thing about that area I loved that I miss was you had Record City, you had Off the Record, 
I worked at Music Trader from time to time, and you had what Thirsty Moon, yeah. right? Yeah. It, it, it's weird because it's all like in there was a synergy to all that. You could go every place and get excited, and there's not so much anymore there. But it wasn't uh, just you. There was a reason to come into Hillcrest. You can make a day out of it. But I really, I think it's important that if you don't have something for somebody, you could always say, you know what, that's, you, have, you, have, you, have you gone to Thirsty Moon? You know, off, off the record might have that. It was kind of like part of like, um, like a community kind of thing. I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for um, recommending uh, another store if I, if I don't have something. They went from being like like French fries like this yeah. down to like this, meaning that they were just kind of like some crispy something. How do you feel about the so-called vinyl revolution coming back? There was that article that vinyl outsold CDs recently, and do customers now have that same kind of patterns of buying these days? You know, their favorite artists in their like. Um, being completists, or, or does that is that still a thing these days? Not well. I can understand you the completist theory, but I don't feel like I meet any of them. You know, you've got people that you know that don't, that only buy rumors. You got people that only buy the first Boston record. They're all great albums, but a lot of these bands have you know really great second albums and thirds and fourths and all that kind of jazz. Surprisingly, you don't see a lot of that. Also, I would say that I'm I'm surprised that we're still selling quite a few CDs. So, well, we've been here for four months. I can honestly say that we neglected the CDs, but I but as you know, as the months have gone by, I could see you know some of them falling over in the racks and all that kind of thing. So we we knew that we had to. Uh, Fill them up again. I don't know if I want to pick Earth, Wind & Fire or the Gap Band. I probably love them equally, but I love them both a heck of a lot. Right here, I am. If somebody says, what, why do you like records so much? It's just a feeling that I have. It's, a, it's taking, out the, taking the record out of the jacket and putting it on. It's, it's an experience. What do you see in the future of this um, incarnation of Record City? Well... The first thing that we realized was that this area and this building, as is, is, is nice as it is, 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 is going to be a destination for us. So we've lost the luxury of the Hillcrest people walking around. If we have, you know, not to say that there's no one walking in here, but they might be walking in from, you know, the restaurant a couple doors down or the Broken Yoke or something like that. So. We, we, we just have to, you know, be creative in our social media and so forth and uh, having people come out to uh, Midway Drive. Hey friends, Nicholas here. Hey, come on down to the new Record City. It's not in Hillcrest anymore. It's here in Sports Arena. It's on uh, Midway Drive. It's 3545 Midway Drive. I believe it's Sweet J. Come on down. Show some support to your favorite local record store. I'll be here uh, to buy some stuff. But uh, yeah, come on down. I'm sure Graham will like that. What do you bought at the store or like things that like, came in from people trying to sell? What I was excited about. You're very excited, yes. <laughs> That's a good question. You got me on the spot. I don't think there's been anything, there's been anything uh, for a while. I mean, it's always good when you get stuff for the store, but on a personal store? personal uh probably the last exciting thing i got was was not actually it was brought in for me personally from a friend because the friend knew that it was a holy grail record for me it was a gary newman record tube way army limit you know like only so many pressed and all that kind of thing and he knew that i wanted it and uh i finally got it and that was that's one of my, yeah, one of my best days was uh, getting that record. That's pretty, yeah. that, that's pretty cool.